So in this video, we're going to be discussing the evolution of the climbing system in tree work. Um, it's come a long way over the years. A lot have been taken from mountaineering, bits from yachting, bits from caving, all sorts of different walks of life has gone into the art of tree climbing. And we're going to look at some of the methods. Right, so first of all, we're going to start off with the free knot system. And I'm going to use a Blake's hitch on this, created by, well, brought to the industry by Jason Blake. Uh, I believe it came from rock climbing before. But I find this a really handy system uh, if you haven't got enough equipment and you need another anchor point. So let's get it started. First of all, make sure you're using the tail end of your rope and leave plenty of length to it. We want to tie a bowline into our ring. So we're going to pull it through the ring. We're going to leave plenty of length and we're going to tie ourselves a bowline. Once the bowline is completed, we're tied into the tail end of the rope now. So we need a system to go up and down and move through the tree. So we're going to tie a Blake's hitch with the tail end onto the other side of the rope. This Blake's hitch, this is going to be for ascending and descending. You simply pull through the Blake's hitch. Now, make sure that that Blake's hitch is definitely dressed correctly. Now, we've got a little tail end here. This is going to be the third knot in the system. And we're just going to put a little stopper knot in there. So if there is any creep, that stopper knot will come up to the Blake's hitch and it will stop it sliding through. So that's the sort of system. Let's have a look, see if it bites. It sits here nice and comfortably. Hands off. So to move up the tree, we just simply pull on the tail end, lift that prussic up, securing us. If we want to come down, simply reach for your prussic and let yourself down. So that's the Blake hitch. Let's have a look at the next one, the prussic loop. This was designed in rock climbing. Uh, I think it was a gentleman called Carl Prusik, I believe, in 1930s. And he designed this for rock climbing, so they could do exactly the same as what we were discussing before, ascending and descending on a system. Uh, it was brought into arboriculture, and now it's kind of its commonplace. Simple loop of rope. And the way it's tied is you simply take the loop, You've got your spliced eye this side, you have a length of rope this side, and you simply take your loop and you just pass the loop through once, twice. Now, in some rescue situations, we might put three wraps on there because we're going to have a bit more weight, but generally, when just climbing, we just have the double pass through. This time, though, we're going to use a carabiner to connect these two together. One through the loop and one through the eye splice. Simply take in your slack, make sure that knot's dressed, and we can sit down in it. Exactly the same with the blokes. Pull up, slide up the knot. Pull up, slide up the knot. And to descend, we just simply pull down on the knot and we come down. Really simple method to get you out of a sticky situation if you've got a loop of rope. And that's the Prusik loop. So, the next one, I'll be honest, I don't actually know what this system's called. Um, I turned up on the competition scene in 2005 and majority of climbers were climbing on this system. It's a lot more efficient than the Prusik loop or the Blakes, uh, but Let's get it tied up so you can see. It's going to involve a wide gated carabiner, a small pulley, and a prussic cord, normally tied with a VT. Um, I believe the climbers in the competitions used to enjoy that because uh, it was nice and quick. Um, it meant that I could get around quicker and more efficiently with this system than a prussic loop. So first of all, we're going to tie a VT. And simply lay the wraps mainly four around the top, and then we cross them 
underneath alternate route to create the VT. So we're going to grab the uh, little pulley that we had, we're going to put that at the base of our VT. Now with our wide gate carabiner, we're going to capture the prussic and the pulley. Now this is the key part, because you've got that wide gate carabiner, that gives us space for our eye splice to go on there as well. And that's, a, that's the system. We simply clip that into our bridge. Now, this is where the evolution starts because as you saw with the prussics, we were pulling from underneath. With this system, we're now pulling from above and taking in the slack from underneath. Make it a bit more ergonomic, not got such a twist in our body and basically allowing the climber to go up and down and tend their slack with the pulley. So, don't know the name of that one, but that is definitely important in where we've gone with our tree climbing. So, from there, we really jumped it up a bit and went into DMM creating the hitch climber. These have come out in all shapes and sizes, different designs to try and move it forward. Um, I'm going to do it on the newest one, the triple attachment. And basically, these guys obviously thought about what we were talking about, how everything was on the carabiner, it was very cluttered, all the loading was on the top, and they wanted a little bit more ergonomic to keep it all in line. And I think this is a big part, a big thing that changed the industry, um, especially going forward onto other devices, of trying to make it more streamlined and more efficient. So, the hitch climber, let's start. I'm going to tie a catalyst because it's my favourite knot, you've probably worked that out by now. But what I do like about the catalyst is you can just tie it and once it's tied, you can forget about it. It's there, giving you plenty of time to set up the rest of your system. So, the hitch climber will go underneath. It's got three eyes in it. We simply put a carabiner through the bottom one and that's that system created. Now we want to connect this to our eye splice end to make the full system. So we go through the top one. Well, I preferably go through the top one because it leaves the middle one for me to be able to do other, other things with. And then we simply clip our eye splice into that. and there's our system. Once again, this allows a climber to pull from the top and tend from the bottom using the pulley. As you can see, holds you nicely and we can just move up and descend quite comfortably. The hitch climber, to me personally, is a big, big thing in the industry. It changed a lot of, a lot of way, the way everyone was thinking and gave a lot more options. Right, so where from the hitch climber did the industry go? Let's look at the next one. Right, so the next in line is from Petzl. Um, they created the zigzag. This is uh, a few models on, but it's pretty much like the hitch climber system. You've got a nice parallel system, three eyes, and now, you've got the option where you haven't got a hitch. So this is going to be continuous. This is really good for those big companies that have a lot of staff and they, they need something that's continuous. It's, there's no way no knots are going to be tied in correctly. And basically, you clip yourself in, just like a hitch climber. You pull your slack through. And you can see those links extend biting into the system. They've also put in a swivel system and a rigid one. So the climber can pull up, keep it in line, simply pull down on the links and the climber's moving back down. So that's the uh, Petzl zigzag. So from there, we really jumped forward. Um, the industry changed a lot. And a gentleman called Kevin Bingham came up with a brilliant idea. This first 
his idea was putting friction into the system so that maybe the hitch wouldn't bite so much and eliminating having the two ropes and having to haul yourself. I'm going to quickly demonstrate what Kevin came up with. This is a bit more forward, forward than what he started with, but hopefully it'll give you the idea. So we've got our two ropes as usual and we've pulled through a load of slack. Up at the top there I've got a cambium saver set up, so I'm just going to simply knot block onto that cambium saver. Knot blocking is basically making a knot. We're going to whack a carabiner in just so that once my weight's on it, that carabiner is going to stop that knot from sliding out. I've tied an alpine butterfly here and I'm going to pull that up to the top. So now that's secured at the top. And what Kevin came up with, which we all know about now, is the wrench. So the rope wrench goes onto the rope above the hitch this time. This creates a kink in the rope, reducing forces on the hitch that we're going to tie. So I'll tie a catalyst underneath it again, because it's simply my favourite knot. Wrench, catalyst. You could use any pulley for this situation. I personally like the hitch climber because it gives me another hole that I can clip my chest harness into. Two prusik eyes go at the bottom once again, and the wrench goes in between them. So as you can see there, prusik, wrench, leg, pulley, wrench, leg, prusik. Simply put the carabiner, I like to use ovals, just a little bit less bulky, make it a bit more streamlined. And we wiggle that, I rotate it right round. So now you can see the rope's been kinked through the rope wrench and it comes down to the hitch. So that's the system set up. The problem is obviously you don't have a mechanical advantage now. You can't pull on one end to pull yourself up. But it's made a bit easier because you simply clip yourself in. Let's just get on that. So our system set up. What we're going to do is we're going to put foot ascender in and we're going to put our knee ascender in. Now, by clipping my chest harness through that third eye I talked about, it means that as I walk up, I'm dragging my system up with me. This is ideal because now, if I get, when, once I get in position, I can just walk up the rope quite easily. So I'm going to go up to the top. Right, so I'm up at the top now, and I'm going to descend, and it's exactly the same as on the other systems. We're just going to break the hitch and come down. As you can see, the wrench is engaged now, so it's putting a kink in it, allowing the knot to work normally. So that is the rope wrench. So from there, uh, people started playing with their zigzag and thinking, well, let's put the wrench on the zigzag and we can use a zigzag with a wrench. Petzl didn't like that um, at the time. I think there was a few issues with the original Petzl. So Petzl decided to do something about it. And they bulked out their original zigzag system and they brought out the chicane. Awesome piece of kit, really, thinking about it, because obviously with the wrench, as you saw, it once it's clipped in, you, you can't take it off too easy. But Petzl created the chicane, which can be popped open, pressing two buttons, and slipped in. As you can see, the chicane is making a kink in the rope again. The, the original reason was, I believe, is the links were getting overextended and getting worn quite badly. So Petzl created this, so it puts a kink in it, allowing for those links to not get too much wear. Simply clips into that top carabiner again, and up you go. Exactly the same with the wrench. Near sender, foot ascender, clip, clip in using your chest ascender, or a lanyard over your shoulder. And you go up, and you can work your whole tree using this as an SRT system. 
The nice thing about the chicane is you can access up on the chicane, get to the top of the tree, land your land your land yard in, unclip your chicane, pop it out. I'll try and get it off. Ask your groundy to untie your base anchor, or even if you've top anchored, untie that. And then you can just simply clip your eye splice back into it, and you've got a double rope again. So, that's Petzl's answer to the SRT world. Right, so back to Kevin Bingham. It was a very, very short period of time, but he came out with the rope runner. This is obviously not the original. It was a bit more rustic than this, but the rope runners just moved on and on and on, coming up with new ideas, different ways to do it. And working with Notch, they've created the Rope Runner Pro. Obviously the Vertex is out as well. Um, the Rope Runner Pro is simple slip pins. So this is nice because it is now made it midline attachable. First one through the top. Pop out these slip pins all the way down. Clipping our way in as we go. Be careful with that bottom one. It can slide the pulley underneath here, but as long as you do it sensibly, it'll fit in. And that's the rope runner. As you can see, we've got three points of contact here. Top one making the kink, and then the bottom two are holding this plate that it rubs against. Exactly the same as the zigzag and the rope wrench. You simply clip yourself in, use a knee ascender and a foot ascender, clip into the uh, connection point here for your chest harness, and it will drag it up as you go. Get somewhere you even work, you simply unclip all that stuff, go straight to work. And that's the Rope Runner by Kevin Bingham, with help with, from Notch. Let's have a look at the last one. This was a bit of a, a unicorn. It was talked about for years and years and years, and then suddenly it hit the market. Right, so the final one on our list from a creator, Jamie Merritt, in partnership with Rock Exotica, is the Akimbo. It's a tiny little device, it's midline attachable. Simply open it up, and feed your rope in. There's arrows on the device showing which way the rope needs to go. It just wiggles in and out, and then simply pull it closed, and the device is engaged. This device has two points of contact. We've got a top plate and the bottom plate. If we engage it, you can see it will have a kink in it. This device can't come open when engaged, so if you're worried that it might flap open or something, the only way it's gonna open is by completely being fully extended. And as you can see, let's whack it on the harness. When engaged, there's no way that is opening right up. It just won't do it. It's got a tiny little clip here for your chest harness. Which is quite a nice little design. So you put your knee ascender and your foot ascender on, you go up, as we did before, and you get to your location and you just gotta lean back. And once you lean back, you're, you're out of that clip. So, that one's the final one on the group, the Akimbo. Right, so in this video, we've gone through a few of the devices that are out on the market. Um, obviously, there's a lot more out there that we haven't gone through, but have a look on the webpage. There's tons of them. Have a look, try different stuff, even come into the shop. We've got ropes set up. Try out the devices, see if you fancy something different, make your life a bit easier. Obviously, we started at the beginning with the Blake's hitch. And we worked our way up all the way to the Kimbo. Hopefully, you found this video helpful, and uh, we'll be seeing you next time. And to move, we simply press a cup. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I got there and then I took the camera out. That's a swing down. Ooh.